Hello and welcome to this MindFusion tutorial where we will show you how to build a bar chart that binds to a data source and updates dynamically when the user chooses a different data period. We start by creating an empty project in Visual Studio. We will use Visual Studio for its support of IntelliSense. We choose New Project, then Web, then ASP.NET Application and then Empty Application. We use the ASP.NET project type because it starts a web server without which we wouldn't be able to access the JSON file that we use as a data source on the local computer. The access shall be blocked by the browser. Next we open the solution folder in File Explorer and create a folder called Scripts. There we will copy the JavaScript files that we will need for the project. We have downloaded the MindFusion chart library from its web page and we have unpacked it. Now. We copy the charting, common and gauges files, as well as the IntelliSense VS doc file. We place them in the scripts folder. Then in Visual Studio, we right click on the folder name and choose Add Existing Item. We point to the three JavaScript files. Next, we create a web page that we call Bar Chart. In it, we add references to the two JS files that we need, Charting and Common. We place the references tag at the end of the web page, right before the closing body tag. We then add a canvas element. It is needed by the chart library to render itself onto. It is important that we give it an ID so we can access it later in code. We will need a JavaScript file that will contain the programming logic of this chart. We add an empty JavaScript file that we call bar chart and save it in the directory of the solution at the same level as the web page. Next, we add a reference to the IntelliSense file and mappings to the namespaces that we'll use in the project. We need to get to know the HTML element for the canvas with ID bar chart that we created in the web page. We set its width and height respectively to the client width and client height of the offset parent of the canvas element. It is time that we create the bar chart. It is an instance of the bar chart control and takes the HTML element of the canvas as an argument. Our chart will use data binding to take its data from a JSON file. I copy the file, which is called data, in the directory of the project. Next, I add it to the project solution and open it. It is a file that contains data for six consecutive months from January to June. The data for each month consists of five entries. Each entry has an ID, a name and a value. The entries represent items that are being sold in a coffee shop, for instance. They're called cakes coffee, juice, salads and sandwiches. We will read the file by using an XML HTTP GET request use a method called LoadJSON that takes as an argument a callback function. In the callback function we make the request, check if the HTTP request object is ready and accessible and if yes we return the data we have read as a string. The method that calls the function is in another method called ReadData. We get the DOM element that corresponds to the period select HTML element. We use it to get the selected value of the combo box. We assign its data as value to the data source property of the bar chart. Then we will assign the values of the index and value fields in the JSON file as data for the X and Y data fields. The property values are the type observable collection because you can provide data for more than one series as we will see later. We also want to bind the data for labels at the x-axis and the inner labels. Finally, we call the update layout method to make the bar chart refresh its view with the new data. Let's check what we've done so far. We refresh the web page with the chart. The data for the first month is visible. When we change months, the bar chart renders the data of the selected month. What happens if we select two months? 
Nothing. The data for just one of them is rendered. Let's change that. In order to render the data for more than one month, we need to create more than one data bound series. Let's look it up on the online documentation of the chart library. Its constructor needs a data source object. So, we get the names of all selected months in an array called selected options. Then, for each month, we get its JSON data from the data file and create a data bound series with this data as an argument. Let's look at the members of the data bound series class. There are properties for the data on all chart axes. For the inner labels and the labels of the X's, we use the X data fields, Y data fields, inner labels data field properties to set the data fields in the JSON file that will provide the data. The X access labels data field is set just once because we need to set the labels for the X access only once. We add all data bound series that we create to a series collection, which we assign to the series collection of the bar chart. We must not forget the invalidate the layout of the bar chart by calling invalidate layout. Now, let's see what we've done. We select one month, more months, it works as it should. It's time to do some appearance setting. First we show tooltips and hide the legend, which we won't use for this chart. Then we do some customization for the axes. The data for the Y axis reaches to 132, so we set its max value at 140, min value to 0, and the interval to 20. We set the same properties but with different value for the X axis, and we hide its coordinates. We add a title to the Y axis. Let's refresh the chart. It looks OK. The font is small, but we will fix that. The chart has a theme property, which holds most of the appearance settings that you'll need to customize any type of chart. Let's look at its members. We see here axis title font size and axis labels font size that we will use to change the font of the axis. There is also data labels font size that changes the font of the labels drawn at chart elements. We set these properties. Now the chart looks better. Here is the tooltip. Let's customize it. We use the static properties of the tooltip class for horizontal and vertical padding and offset. We also set a custom pen and brush for the labels and change their font. Let's refresh the page and see what we've done. It looks better. Now we will add a grid. This is done by setting the grid type property to a value different than none, which is its default. We set it to grid type horizontal and use the grid line color and grid line style properties to specify how the grid will look. We then set two colors for the grid lines. The first is white, the second is pale gray. Let's look at the chart. It is nice, but we need to change the brushes for a series. We will do this by setting arrays with the brushes for the fills and strokes of the chart. We create two arrays with brushes, one for the fills and the other for the strokes. The brush for the strokes are slightly darker than the series fills. We add them to the other lists and assign those lists to the series fills and series strokes properties of the theme. The theme uses nested arrays as brush and stroke properties to allow better customization of charts that render multiple series. You can add a unique brush for each element in each series. Let's refresh the chart. It looks much better now.
The font can be lighter and the highlight pen is a more contrasting colour. Let's set that. We use the Data Labels brush, Data Labels font size, Data Labels font style and Data Labels font name properties to customise the way Data Labels are drawn. Next we use the Highlight Stroke property to set an orange brush as a highlight. We refresh the chart. Now it looks perfect. With that, our tutorial is finished. Thank you for watching and thank you for your interest in MindFusion developer tools.